Yup. What's up, everybody? Mike Antonellis, good to have you in the chat room this time. A little bit different here on Thursday. If you guys are new to this uh, Twitch stream, I'm Tim Quidadamo, uh, manager of productions for the AAA Red Sox, manager of Paw Sox Productions, and uh, we're embarking on a little bit of a journey. This is the International E-League, so if you've been tuning in on Tuesdays, uh, you've seen we have Mike, we have Josh Maurer, uh, we have Jim Kane broadcasting sort of a television style broadcast for you in our competitive international league play that we have uh, on MLB The Show. So to give you guys a little update right now, well first I'll, I'll lay out how this league works. So on Tuesday, we played our first game of a three-game series against the scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders, the AAA affiliate of the New York Yankees. We won our game 16 to nothing. Not a big deal. Uh, and, and they won their game, game two of the series, if you will. Uh, we played those games against the computer. MLB The Show doesn't let you play with minor league teams online. So today, the series is tied 1-1. It's going to be Red Sox-Yankees for the series dub. Let's get after it. Right now, we're waiting on Mike from scranton Wilkesbury. He's loading up the game right now. Just needs a couple more minutes, but I just wanted to hang out with you guys in the chat right now. So what's going on? Mike, I know you're here. If you guys want to uh, enter the chat, too, if you're not already following, just hit the little heart-shaped follow button up at the top of the stream. It's completely free, and it just lets you know when we go live. Uh, once you follow for 10 minutes, you can chat with us in the chat room. Uh, one other thing I'm going to mention. Look at that, Doc. Thanks for the follow. One other thing I'm going to mention uh, is that... If you scroll down below this stream, you'll see a little button like this. Taylor, how's it going? Welcome back. So, guys, this button uh, allows you to donate to the Paw Sox Foundation. 100% of the proceeds from this stream will go towards those affected by COVID-19, whether it's local food banks, hospitals, um, and we're just trying to equip them as much as we possibly can, help out as much as we possibly can. If you're unable to, that is totally fine. Only if you are able do we want you to even think about donating. If you're so inclined, you can go down, scroll down below. Oh, that's the wrong thing. You'll see a button that looks like, that looks just like this. Uh, and it'll bring you to a web page that allows you. But what's up, guys? How we doing? How we doing? Paw Sox Mafia, welcome back. Isaac, what's up? Good to see you again. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous for this one. Joe Schwartz, super fan, thanks for the follow. What Paw Sox players or players in general do you think will make it up to the Red Sox? I'm not sure, Isaac. You know, uh,. Do you mean like if it were if it were a normal year? So I'm definitely in no GM position or anything like that. I like seeing all of our guys succeed when we have them. If it were a normal year? Yeah, I mean, this seems like an obvious answer, but you look at a guy like Dahlbeck, and he has a cannon. E.G., thanks for the follow he has a cannon, plays a corner infield, power every which direction. Uh, so that's definitely an, an attractive get for the big league club if they ever needed it. it. It depends on a lot of things, too, you know? That's just baseball. But obviously you know that, too. Um, but yeah, Dahlbeck would be, would be probably my biggest bet. Um, and then you look at guys who were having a terrific spring, like Jansen Witte was having a great spring. He was hitting the ball all over the yard. Uh, Tanner Houck was pitching lights out in the spring. I actually went down and saw him um, Saw him 
pitch against the Atlanta Braves, and he had a 1-2-3 inning where uh, I think he struck out Albies and um, Azuna, which was very encouraging to see. Just shooting a text to Mike from Scranton right now. Favorite Paw Sox player to play with on the show? I absolutely rake with Josh Ockamy. I don't know what it is. I just love his swing, and I, I drop bombs. It's like Ock in real life. I just get a hold of one, and it never lands. It never lands at all. Marcus Wilson and CJ Chatham are pretty good, too. Those guys are, are incredible, too. We haven't even seen Marcus Wilson in Pawtucket yet. I met him briefly at spring training uh, in early March, and he's just an outstanding guy. Great conversation to have with him, and puts on a show in BP, too. Those are guys that... uh. Our Mike Antonellis, who's in the chat, has seen a lot of as well. I think I think Auk kind of knows who I am. I've never, like, really gone out of my way to, um, never really, like, gone out of my way to, like, hang out with him or anything, you know? I kind of let him do his, do his own thing, but obviously uh, my colleagues and I will have to ask him for favors. Some of those PSAs you've seen, stuff like that. Some interviews that we have to do with them. Um, but Auk is another one that's just a great guy. But he, I, I think he'd recognize me. He's seen me around the clubhouse and around spring training. All right, we got the game invite. This gets a little wonky with invites, though. So he sends me an invite. I accept it. And then this is what my screen says. That my challenge is being reviewed. Even though he sent it to me first. So it always gets a little weird, but... Hold on, I might have to send it. Yeah, all right, I got to send him one. Go back to just chatting. I always forget to hide that lower third, so it just pops up every time. Oh, that's the wrong one. Mike, have you played Marcus Wilson in FIFA? <laughs> no chance, he says. Was that something the guys would just always play in the clubhouse in Portland? All right, here we go. Here we go. Here, let me hide this. What unis are we thinking? I'm partial to the the road blues, but we wore those in uh against the Mets, and it didn't really go well. Right, let's just go. Let's just go gray. Let's do it. He's pitching Tanaka? Okay. Okay. Let's go Eddie, man. I feel like Eddie always does well when he's pitching in New York. Let's see. I actually, I like that lineup. There you have it. There you have it, chat. There are the lineups. 
Stanton up on the big league club in online play is interesting because we just had to play against him on Tuesday when he was on the AAA roster. And again, guys, this scrolling list of logos up here, some of our corporate partners that we've been highlighting every week as we do this international e-league. Risky decision playing online with Erod. I know you'd like to have a little bit more breaking stuff as opposed to the four seam, two seam cutter changeup, but I like the left on left. First pitch swinging just lined into the shift. They did an update for the game yesterday, some cool things. Mike, do you know exactly what they updated? Because I still haven't been able to find much. Sinkers are tough in this game. That's that's a good point, Mike. The pitch. Nope. Spit at that. <laughs> Scared of Devers, and I would be too. Graffiti, thanks for the follow. Get down. That's a bad pitch to swing at 3 1. Hitting easier in, in DD. There's more stats to play and some fielding issues. Yeah. No, there are fielding issues all across. Like, definitely not just you. Oh. What a snag over at the hot corner from Induhar. One, two, three in the top of the first. We don't like that. We don't like that. Leading off for the Yankees. The second baseman, DJ. Love Mayhew. Paint. Pain on that first pitch. Let's go. It's a lot of yapping out of me. Early. See if we can time up with the cutter here. Little two seam. The two seam kind of works like a sinker in this game. At times. Oof, trying to get him to chase something high. Let's see if we can spot this cutter again. Oh, you can't warm up a starter. That's a good eye. Run. What a hose from JBJ. That one got a little bit too much of the plate. Good change, good change. Try to tie him up. I don't, how does he get a piece of that? Get him looking. Let's go, two down. 
chat. We do have a little bit of a a little bit of a special guest coming in here for you. Nope. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in a while, that is the voice of Mike Monaco. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Glad, good to hear your voice. You like that? <laughs> I had to whip that up real quick. Oh, hold on. The chat. Audio quality. Here we go. All right, you're good now. Mike Monaco, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, TQ. Thank you for having me. This is uh, this is foreign territory uh, for me. It, Hopping on, watching a Twitch stream, and uh, what's this app called that I'm on to, to call in right now? On Discord. Discord. Discord, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have not experienced either of these before, but I have been playing the show uh returning to video games for the first time in a while oh, yeah. and i saw a bunch of folks in here commentating about how great this game is and how realistic and let me second that it is a blast it's unbelievable so you were telling me earlier that you're playing a seven game series with your roommate right yeah so uh, i think probably about a week into this whole quarantine um we decided to buy a ps4 and yep. to buy this game and to split it and you know saved up some money and and made that purchase as something to do and yeah so we've been playing a, a seven game a best of seven world series on the postseason mode yep did you just hit a bomb i just hit a bomb baby michael chavis you're used to, you're <laughs> used to that from last year at mccoy look at that is that a breaking ball oh yeah breaking ball just went with it right center Hit it wow. 400. I don't know. I don't know how you talk and play at the same time. I uh, so after you know, uh, but some some people in the chat might not. Oh, did I just go back to back? Let's go. But uh, so I played four years of college baseball oh at God. Emerson College. That's my guy too, Jackie Bradley. But after I Carol was... Baskins is loving it in the comments. <laughs> another another off speed pitch. Uh, but anyway, I played four years of baseball at Emerson College in Boston. And after that, you know, I was I was just job searching and felt kind of lost, to be honest. I was missing mm -hmm. my sports. You know, watching baseball just made me miss being out on the field, too. So there was a bit of, like, mm -hmm. a pit in my stomach. And that's right when uh, Fortnite was taking off, like, big time. Mm -hmm. Everyone was playing Fortnite. And I was terrible. I was trash. So I woke up every day and I went, you know what? Every day I'm going to apply to at least five jobs. I'm going to get my butt out of bed, go for a little walk around the neighborhood, exercise a little bit, apply, and then I'm going to get good at Fortnite was my other goal. Mm. So I started watching Twitch streams, started watching like Ninja and people like that seeing what they were doing like studying up and trying to do it and then mm -hmm. fast forward two years later coronavirus you know and yep. this opportunity comes to us where it's hey adam marco the broadcaster from scranton said let's let's do an international e-league so that's awesome people have something to watch so joe jacobs knowing that I'd been an avid Twitch viewer, said, hey, you just take it, take it and run. So this is how I ended up yeah. doing it. I've only been watching streams and stuff for a couple of years. So it's uncharted territory for me too. starting this whole thing. Um, that's awesome. And you look to be, even just from watching these first couple innings, <laughs> quite good at it. And I think you would dust me if we were to play against one another. Oh, bogey. Oh, man. The, the fielding, I will say, in this game uh, is troublesome. It, it's very troublesome. It's very troublesome. It's crazy, like, guys who have the, like, bronze icon under them fielding, they'll just mm -hmm. get, like, a routine ground ball in the outfield. Like, by the time it gets to mm -hmm. them, it's rolling, like, 60 miles an hour, and they just boot it yep. with nobody on. It's um, So, TQ... People can can hear both of us right now. If 
how do I participate in the chat? Because I have the Twitch pulled up and I can see uh, comments. Am I able to type in that too or uh -oh. no? Uh oh, he might have just tied it. Uh -oh. So can you rob it? Oh, almost. Um, Who's in right field? Is that Pilar? Yep, that's Kevin Pilar. Great defensive outfield. Benintendi, Bradley, Pilar, left to right. Uh, Although, uh, JPJ's fielding uh, rating in this game, I, I think, is criminally underrated. If I'm if I'm reading it correctly. No, you're absolutely right. It's the same as, I mean, Red Sox fans have been saying this for years too. Like ever since he started being the everyday center fielder, where you feel like at the end of the season he's a surefire candidate at the very least for a gold glove and for a while yep. he wasn't really being recognized as such so it was good to see him yep. finally get one and he's been pretty much in the top three every year since uh but to, yeah to answer your question from earlier if you want to join the chat you make a twitch account i gotta log in on twitch yep. is that right totally free okay uh if you have amazon prime you can even subscribe to some people in twitch if you end up really mm -hmm. getting into the twitch community but create an account hit the follow button which is at the top of the stream it's a little yeah, hard we, we gotta get to it. not that you need not that you need uh, our help but we gotta get your cloud up because you look to be pretty good at this <laughs> i mean that was a bad a bad home run i just let up too <laughs> uh yeah so I, I guess i won't type then but um uh, I, I see Mike Antonella said, Mike, if, I think you can hear me. Uh, great to great to see you over here and hope you're still doing well. I know we chatted a few weeks ago, but uh, I think, Mike, you and I are probably in the same boat that, that we might not fare too well if we were to play TQ one-on-one -on -one in this. Uh, but, man, the game the game is just a total blast. So are you playing right now against, against Adam Marco or are you playing against uh, the computer? No, so I'm playing against uh, Mike forgetting what his last name is uh but adam marco so is, someone with the rail riders correct yep um and adam marco cool. is is broadcasting their games much like we do on uh tuesdays with mike who's in the chat josh obviously and jim kane do a little three-man nice. booth on tuesdays and so you are always playing a game tuesday and thursday and those games count toward the standings yep those count towards yep. the standings so it's a three-game set I'll call it as opposed to a series because mm -hmm. I only play two of the games. I play the one we do on Tuesday nights at seven uh, and then the head to head matchup, which is Thursday nights, usually at seven. Um, Does the other one get simulated? The other one uh, Scranton plays. So okay. we have nothing to do with it other than they're playing the Paw Sox in that. Gotcha. Game. Gotcha. So generally, Oh, I thought he beat it yeah. out inning ending double play generally uh it's it's a 1-1 series going into the head-to-head -head matchup which makes things nice and interesting tq it looks like you got quite the fan club here people are, are talking about your your uh your heat level my heat level and they're saying it's only fun with tq is hot and tq is hot all day <laughs> which Look Probably at, has a variety of meanings from Michael Cusey. Yeah, I was gonna say, read the name on that on that uh, Twitch chat. And so that is the, that is it the seems like you got quite the fan club here. That's what we're hoping for, you know. We're hoping to just give. They people... like the beard. They like the beard. <laughs> we're hoping to give people a little bit of baseball, as virtual as it may be, to just kind of unwind at the end of a Thursday, you know. Yep. But Mike, uh, I, I, I would very, be remiss. I very much agree with, I very much agree with uh, Mike Antonellis just made the comment when he's facing Tanaka and they yep. have the computer pitching. You know everything's going to be low, yep. so he just That's lines true. up the PCI really low. My roommate does the same thing pretty much regardless of who he's pitching with. Like everything is a two seamer slash sinker low in the zone, oh. and you just you're tempted to swing at everything, even the ones that are outside of the zone. Oh yeah, I've been I've been tying him up. Uh, with cutters today and he's getting a piece of cutters that are like three feet and in, inside from the zone it's unbelievable the thing about erod uh sorry I, i'm i'm watching it on the twitch stream so it's a del no, little you're delayed fine. as i you're realize fine. it um thing about erod is yeah I, I guess it never really dawned on me how he's he's not he doesn't have like a curveball or a slider in this game yeah and so you know it, it's not like he's got that 
serious change of velocity pitch, you know, maybe in the seventies that you go to for, for something different. Yeah, that's true. You got to play with location a lot. And the two seam kind of acts like a sinker. You have the cutter that's, that's cutting into a righty. You try to just blow people by with a high fastball, 95, but it's tough. And, and Mike, I'd be yeah. remiss if I didn't make you do this. Do you want to tell the chat what day it is today? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is Thursday, May 14th. Is that right? Is that the answer you're looking for? It is Thursday, May 14th. Did you 14th. just go deep? I did just go deep. What's the significance? of that day <laughs> uh, well it, it's my birthday today and as we say it mitch moreland hits a home run so so what a gift that that is that's right that's absolutely right i mean how is that for timing tq i mean you give the people what they want yeah because you know it's not about me you're you're a guest on on this show i just wanted to give you some <laughs> birthday love oh and look at that, that i appreciate shifted. it back to back no outfield shifted oh, no. over uh towards left center for Michael Chavis and he just drops a duck fart into right field down the line for a double. You love to see it. So Chavis has a home run and a double. Is that right? Did you do anything with him earlier? That's absolutely right. What a professional. You're not even, yeah. you don't even have a scorebook open or anything and you're already uh, telling everybody. If he's swinging it like that, you, you got to feel good about him in the sixth spot. Oh yeah, my gosh. Right. Yeah. The short porch Don't and Jackie Bradley. Don't let him Bradley. get hot. The short porch and Jackie Bradley Jr. Oh, not wow. even an out here in the top of the fourth. You hate to see it, folks. So, are uh, are you someone who is very patient with uh, with the counts, it, or because like I I get tempted to just kind of swing at everything. Yeah. So it it depends. Sometimes I I get a little frustrated. We all do. We're all human, you know. And I start just swinging at everything especially when i'm doing game modes like against the computer uh mm -hmm. and on tuesdays when it is against the computer josh mauer loves to rip on me about swinging at the first pitch because i do it all <laughs> the time and and i think i think he's not a fan of he's trying to sort of set the scene uh because obviously you know josh he's a storyteller great broadcaster he's trying to set a, a scene. pros pro yep and i i like am just swinging at the first pitch with everybody so he has yep. to interrupt himself and then go over what just happened and then go back to his story i mean what has gotten into you this happened on tuesday was there too. did i miss a batter in between or was that back to back to back uh oh, no 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 there was the there Chavis, was a Chavis, Chavis double in between four extra I'm base sorry. hits I in thought a row it was though a but while we have, I think we're having right. a, a are little... We, are we going to the pen or what? Yeah, we're going to the pen. Tommy Canley coming in. Oh, he throws gas. But, Mike, I promised I promised our buddies, Joe Jacobs and Alex Richardson, that I'd do this. And I want chat to join me at home and type it out if you can. But I want to I wanna sing you happy birthday while I have you here. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear oh, wow. I. Happy birthday to I mean, how about you. the dulcet tones of TQ? That was for you, bud. That was just for that you. was amazing. And to the to the folks chiming in in the in the chat. I see your comments and I appreciate them very much. Um, although, you know, hearing Tim sing it, that was that was tough to top. But I do very much appreciate it. Any anything for you, man? Anything. For so, you. but but I, I want to go back. Mike just brought this up. Mike Antonellis brought this up in the chat. Like when I'm playing my a game against my roommate, like we don't talk for nine innings because we're so focused on like what pitch is being thrown. I don't know how you do this. So, and I don't know if you're I don't know if you're moderating any of this or putting up any of these promos or that lower third. I don't know how you're doing all this. So yeah, I'm I am putting up uh the lower third. I'm switching between scenes uh like when we go from the full game view to just me uh back to whatever. But just like baseball, there's a lot of action between innings you know i worked the video board last year uh for those of you in chat who yeah. don't know 
I was operating the video board, putting up graphics at McCoy last year, and a lot of my work was done between innings, between pitches. But when the game's actually going on, I was kind of just watching, waiting for the action to be over before I could play a song or put something up on the video board. So yeah. for me, it's a lot like that as far as in between pitches and innings go. Oh, that might be two. Yep. Um, Ugh. They, they turn two on, like, everything. On everything. Game. That one was slow developing, too. I thought JD might beat it out, but... Um, right, right. So, anyway, and, as far as, like... No matter who's running. Exactly. As far as hitting goes, I actually find that hitting for me in this game is much like in real life, where if I approach it thinking about it, I'm going to do poorly. Mm. But if I'm just reacting and, and just letting... It sounds silly, but muscle memory, obviously, yep. playing baseball, it's your whole body. In this, it's eyes focusing the right places and your thumbs moving. But it really is yep. muscle memory and just reacting, trying to get a... Oof. Tough. Oof. Moreland's good, but that was uh, that's not his fault. That's tough to yeah, handle. That's very tough to handle. So, so do you have Chavis at second? Yep, Chavis at second. Infield uh, from... Around the horn, Devers at third, Bogart short, Shave is second, Moreland at first. Obviously, Vasquez is doing mm -hmm. the catching. Yeah. And then you are you already said Pilar and right. So you don't have Verdugo and Sale available. Right? No, so Verdugo and Sale uh, are on the. Oh, where did that miss? They're on the uh, minor league rosters because they're injured. So they default mm -hmm. guys like that. Assuming they'll have rehab starts. It was the same with um, when we I played Scranton Wilkesbury on Tuesday. Their two, three, four in their order was uh, <laughs> Aaron Judge, Aaron Hicks, Giancarlo Stanton. Oh, great! Yeah, That's so that fun. was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's getting a little rally going here. All right, let's get two here. Let's roll two. I haven't been able to roll to all game, I don't think, but would love it here. I'm getting them to hit just weak choppers, but foul every time. I like it. Start, starting with the two-seamer down. See yep. if you can get... What, are you going to try to get him chase here? Yep, try to get him chasing a change. I up. like it. I like it. That caught a little bit too much of the middle of the plate, though. I like getting the slow stuff low and away. Try to get him to roll over. Well, that was paint. That should have been a strike. I've been, I've been, not. I haven't been getting those calls all game. Is what I mean to say. Oh, let's roll two. Give him the run. Nice turn, Mikey. You're good luck, buddy. Who's, who says Chavis is new to second base still? <laughs> he was. Look at that turn. He was spinning them well uh, in spring training when I was down there, uh, yeah. getting some video yeah. of the guys fielding. And I thought he played well there last year, too. Yeah, he, he definitely did. It looked sort of natural for him uh, to transition yeah. over to second base. Yeah. All right, we're out of it. One run of damage. We're out of it. Yeah, we love that. So, Mike, you were, obviously, work, you were obviously down at spring training as well. I would hate for this to devolve into sort of an interview, but I am going to ask you this question. AMA, ask me anything. So you were broadcasting some of the spring training games on Nesson with Steve Lyons. Could you yes. share any interesting Steve Lyons stories? Because you introduced me oh, to him man. briefly, and the guy is an electric factory. Another one. First, can we can we marvel at <laughs> a two home run day, right? Yeah, and Moreland walked it off for me last week too in the series clincher. Was that Oppo? Did, was that, did I see a highlight of that earlier? Yep, Oppo wall ball. God, God love him. Uh, oh, man, you just you just come right back. The Yankees <laughs> threaten, and the, T, the TQ locomotive just does not stop. It's just like um, you... back in the day. Sorry, I know I asked a question, and I'm not really letting you answer right now, but it's just like back in the day when uh, Clemens hit Kevin Millar. And then Pedro came out and hit the first two batters of the inning. He said, you tell Clemens, <laughs> you take one of mine, I take two of yours. Yeah. 
Uh, there was a comment. I don't know if you're able to see these, and uh, I guess I'm self-appointing myself moderator here. No, Someone has that. commented. And it looks like Taylor Bolduc yeah. has commented yeah. in a in a DJ Khaled voice. Another one <laughs> after that Mormon home run. Another one. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. good. Uh, so your question, your question uh, was about Steve Lyons, and uh, yeah, I was lucky. I got to do some games with Steve, and then got to do a few games with Jerry Remy. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, our, we did a, a we did a game on a on that Wednesday night before all of this changed, right. uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. So we did a game. The Red Sox were playing at the Rays. Mm -hmm. on a Wednesday night. And that was the, the night of the Rudy Gobert um, news and right. the NBA. And, and that day was, I remember before the game, Jerry and I were kind of monitoring the news going on throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, and we had seen that the NCAA tournament had said that there would be no fans. And uh, Jerry was all over this. Even from the beginning of the week, he was, you know, the, the big news that week had been that, you know, clubhouse access had been restricted yep. for media members and um jerry had been all over it and you know was was kind of thinking well hey we it might get a little bigger than this and uh things might really change beyond just the the question of you know how far away do you stand apart when yeah, exactly. when interviewing someone yeah. um but to your question on great steve lyon stories oh man uh probably too many to to go into uh but man, he's he's just so fun. We were we were on the air in one of our games, and we started talking about how much minor leaguers get paid, or in a lot of cases don't get paid. Yep. And we were talking about the jobs that some guys have to do in the off season to to make enough money so that they can make a living, or so that they can train the way that they want to. Mm -hmm. And we were going back and forth about you know kind of the the ethics of that of of paying minor leaguers and how it should be and we were reliving some of his past jobs when he was trying to make money during his, his playing career as well yeah and at one point he volunteered he said i, I was a ups driver for a week <laughs> and i was like ah oh, just a week were you fired and he ended up telling this great story about how he had been a ups driver and he had parked the truck, or so he thought, on a hill <laughs> and went in to, you know, hand deliver the package, leave it at the door, whatever. And the person who he ended up handing the package to, they said, hey, is that your truck? As it started rolling down the hill. <laughs> and so <laughs> Steve went sprinting after the truck to try to catch up to it. Fortunately, it didn't hurt anyone. But he went sprinting after it. And, you know, then he had to call back to the office and they were great about it. And they said, you know, how are you? Are you OK? Um, you know, how's the truck? And they didn't you know, they weren't mad at him right then and there. Just and then disappointed. They eventually, <laughs> they, they eventually did let him go soon thereafter. Uh, so we had a great laugh about that. And, and Steve was great, you know, having some fun with it and playing along and he's just he's an awesome broadcaster he's done so yeah, much in his career uh and just a great personality too and so we had a ton of fun with that then we're back the next weekend and we're in the middle innings and he while we're doing the broadcast he takes out a toy ups truck <laughs> that some fan gave to him that day before the game they had heard the story the weekend before and brought him <laughs> this like toy miniature ups truck and so we were dying about it and you know i don't know if anyone here in the chat was had to, had, was watching that at any point or even follows along with my my messy storytelling right now but it was hilarious oh, that's phenomenal just, so yes needless to say steve lines is a riot just the image of him imagining him running down the street just chasing a brown box <laughs> of a van <laughs> is laugh out loud funny yeah yeah he uh he's a riot and he brings brings a ton of good insight baseball wise but just a great demeanor and personality to it and so you know for me as it is with any of them it was a total joy to to sit next to him for a few of those games and just you know sit back and and listen to the stuff that he had oh, to I say bet. you know i bet and just stay out of his way and, and let him do his thing and and <laughs> just try to enjoy the the brilliance he brings to it yeah, he was. All right, so we got we got some questions coming in here, though. Oh yeah. Uh, 
it, this has got to be your biggest fan. EGTSR, do the fans know how good you were back in the day? TQ, do the fans know how good you were back in the day? I mean... And since that hadn't been answered, they said, I'm not feeling the love. So, so what do we got? So, it was like a, an early bloomer kind of thing, which isn't true height-wise or weight-wise, if you know me. Just 5'9". The beard never, says otherwise. Yeah, the beard say. says otherwise. But 5'9", never really, never really weighed over 150 until after college. Um, Pedroia metrics. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But the guy's name is, is EGTSR. So we played, I played for Tatnik Senior Ruth, which he was the president and founder of the team. Mm. And believe it or not, I was a three-hitter center fielder for Tatnik Senior Ruth back in the day. Love that. That's how you get out of the jam, too. I was still just high average, though. Extra base hit maybe like one every three games or something. I wasn't really going gap to gap, but I'd, wrong with that. I'd get on and let the legs kill you. Mm-hmm. Not to toot my so you, you weren't you weren't bringing the Mitch Moreland power that we've seen today. No, I wasn't. I wasn't at all. I was well. Our favorite EGTSR response with legend. In case you can't <laughs> read it, appreciate that EG. Oh man, are you, so are you gonna pick up this series uh, tonight, or what's the schedule looking like? The seven game so, set with you yeah. And so I just got carved up by of all people, Anibal Sanchez, of course with with Red Sox roots himself. Yep. Um, so the series is is two two. Um, I'm the Angels, he's the Nationals, so I don't feel great about my pitching staff, but I actually really like my lineup. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a yeah. tough play. The fact Benintendi has 50 speed in this game, too, is is ridiculous. It's criminal. Yeah. Criminal. So, tomorrow, is that what you said? I'm sorry, I was I was locked in. Uh, no, yeah, no, I, I, I didn't even get around to it. I think we'll probably play uh, maybe one tonight. We'll see. We played one earlier today, and I uh, came out on the losing end. But uh, it's fun playing with Otani. Oh, because uh, if you're playing, if you're pitching Otani in a National League park, I, I just move him up to the cleanup spot behind <laughs> Trout and Anthony Rendon. Yeah. So you've got your pitcher in the cleanup spot. It's pretty fun. Do you play the Diamond Dynasty mode at all? I know Mike Antonellis. So I have so. not, and I, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. It's, well, I, I shouldn't say I don't know anything. I've seen a buddy of mine, a guy who's a, a pitcher for the Blue Jays, Anthony K. He talks about it a lot on his social media, mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm not familiar with it myself. Uh, so it's basically, do you? I don't know if you ever do it with Madden or FIFA, the ultimate team, the like card collecting based uh, game. No, okay, taken but I, I, I kind of get it. Yeah, so it's, yep. just, it's like you collect baseball cards and those are the people you can play with. So you can play with legends. They have like a breakout series cards like David Ortiz in 2004 when his career started taking off. There's a David oh, Ortiz wow. Breakout Series 2004 card. Um, but Mike Antonellis, who's in the chat right now saying Diamond Dynasty rules, is a big Diamond Dynasty guy, and I've gotten into it a lot this year. So so, it, so here I am. I've been reading some of these comments to you, but but you can do it all. I mean, you can see these comments as well. You, you don't need me for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got we've got someone named Rusne in the chat. Yep, Rusne hangs out in the chat. Don't know if it's the real thing, but Ruse, Ruse yeah, is I don't here. Know. Uh, and Rusne, as you can see, and everyone can, uh, talking about Dahlbeck. So I saw the Paw Sox had posted like a player card of Dahlbeck. Is That's that what right. that was from, Diamond yeah, Dynasty? that was from Diamond Dynasty. So they release new like cards and new series all the time. Um, and mm -hmm. they released a Future Stars series. So every team has a Future Star that's like a really high overall um and for the red sox it was bobby dahlbeck and he's very cool unreal that's awesome so on my on my uh diamond dynasty squad i actually have him playing first and i have a uh, hanley ramirez dodgers card playing third oh. and both of them just absolutely rake yeah 
Let's see. Let's see if the does the chat stop. have any I'd questions stop. for for uh, Mike Monaco, the legend himself. Fire away. Let's hear it. You know he's reading them. We we got we got the time run of the plate here, Tim. You can't lose focus. You're right. You're right. Uh, to 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 Carol Baskins underscore Joe Exotic. Did I play baseball? So I grew up um, in Cohasset, Massachusetts, south of Boston. I played all the way through high school. Did not play um, in college. Um, was not much of a player really at any level, but loved it. You know, played it as long as I could. Um, and uh, have, haven't gone out and thrown the baseball recently. Would love to. We got a question. Oh, best roost name memory. Man, that is tough. There's a lot um, of them. Yeah, I mean, man, he was so good, um, you know, in, in 2017, 2018, he was really good. In the last year, he was playing through some back issues um, at certain points and yep. um, yeah, yeah. was still really productive, but, but maybe wasn't at the same level he was those first two years. But, I mean, it was amazing especially like in 2017, it, it just felt like it was like a multi-hit game for him all the time. And when he'd get on a hot stretch, and Josh talked about this a lot, and I'm sure Mike's even seen it um, w when he's called Paw Sox games, but like when he gets going over a week stretch, I mean, he just he can just put it together and there's really no slowing him down. Yeah, it's, um, it's like he and, can't miss a barrel. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I would just say to him personally, um, you know, the bottom line is the bottom line when it when it comes to money. Um, for him and his contract will always be a huge part, if not the biggest part of his story. But, I mean, he, he works his tail off, and any of the oh, coaches yeah. will tell you that on staff. And he treats his teammates really well, and he recognizes the fortunate position that he's in financially. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would just say he's done a lot of good when – um, maybe some of his, his teammates aren't in as financially a great position as he is. Um, and so that's always pretty cool to see. Yeah, that's, uh, that's let's see, common best theme. place. Yeah, yeah. Best place to broadcast from any stadium or ballpark from Paw Sox Mafia. Um, I'll give a two-pronged answer. Last year I got to broadcast a couple games from Fenway at the end of the season, and that like was that might, amazing. That might take the case. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so having – growing up going to that ballpark and going to games and a huge Red Sox fan like I'm sure a lot of the people here in the chat that was incredible and an experience in its own category um, but maybe a, a little less common a thought here um, for best place to broadcast from in the International League uh, Charlotte is just a, a sight to behold there um, mm -hmm. there's an incredible backdrop to what they call uptown Charlotte, basically like downtown in the city yep. and this just gorgeous skyline. It, it feels like you're in like a big league setting there. Um, so that's just a beautiful place. If anyone ever happens to find themselves in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, I've, just a, a really cool spot. Yeah. I have a couple of friends who have gone down just on business trips, unrelated to baseball to Charlotte and I've yet to hear a bad thing about Charlotte. Yeah, and yeah, it's uh, it's outstanding. The one fear I have for it is, you know, when probably about five or six years ago, everyone was like, Nashville is this hidden gem of a city. Yep. And now everybody goes to Nashville. Yep. I, I just hope Charlotte remains this beautiful kind of secret. Not secret. Yeah, I remember talking it, to but... some of the locals down there about it, and I think they're very cognizant of that as well, that, like, it's changing. And I think there is a ton of expansion and growth to it, and there's always construction that probably the handful of times that I've been down there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's it. I, I could definitely see, uh, you know, that as far as a, as a fear goes. Um, the great Carol Baskins underscore Joe Exotic. Any good Rick stories from on the road? Um, I will go back to some of our road trips like Charlotte and Louisville. Um, like last summer was probably maybe a little late to the game, but when, you know, those scooters like birds yep, became birds really scooters. popular. And when we go to like, I don't know, Scranton and Lehigh Valley, it's not like 
we're staying in a place where there's these birds everywhere. Mm -hmm. But when we go to cities like Charlotte and Louisville or uh, I'm assuming Indianapolis, you would say the same. You know, we've got some of the big city amenities. Yeah, right. Um, and so Rick and I had some fun riding uh, scooters, in particular around downtown Louisville. And uh, let's just say that the man is skilled at the wheel of, uh, <laughs> of a scooter. That's great. For those of you who don't know Rick, Mike, do you want to give a little description of Rick Medeiros? Yeah, Rick Medeiros, longtime Paw Sox employee, has his, uh, his hands involved in a ton of different areas of the organization um, and does a great job kind of coordinating a ton of the security back at McCoy. Um, in addition to being in charge of ushers and, and all sorts of things. But what he also does is when the team does not take a bus trip somewhere, so when they fly to a place like Louisville or to a place like Charlotte, he drives a Penske van, which basically serves as the equipment truck. And so they load up a bunch of stuff into it, and Rick will log these massive driving trips um, to and from with his partner Kenny, um, mm -hmm. as well. Kenny Estrella, Kenny Star, as we call him. Um, and so they'll log serious hours and Rick's been doing it forever and was very close with a lot of the players who, you know, they're, they're trusting a lot of their equipment to him. Right. Um, and they know that he's going to get the job done, which, yeah. you know, might not sound like the, the most common thing to think of, but, uh, it's a really crucial role for the team. And, and Rick's just a great guy and he's a huge personality yeah. and a, a on, ton of fun. On to be top of being so reliable and so great at what he does he's just so much fun to be around all the time too yeah so yeah i'll, I'll miss you know for three years during the season my desk was directly across from rick's and so being a, <laughs> sit across from him and just listen to uh, his great rhode island accent every day he uh we had a ton of laughs we're, we we're actually texting yesterday back and forth for a while What's up, man we, we've had some good laughs through the years <laughs> I love Rick's one of my probably the only person I love doing an impression of that we work with just, <laughs> every time I'd walk in he would just have the fist bump ready to go just hit me with a what's up fella what's up fella what's up fella, what's up, fella? yeah how you doing yeah he's good <laughs> just an absolute uh, stud oh Kevin Pilar yeah. He just put a charge into one? Going to a deep part of the park, left center, first row. Wow. How, so how many home runs in this game? Oh. Is that five for you? Uh, so Chavis has one, JBJ has two, Moreland has two. Oh, wow. So that would be the sixth, I think. So that's six. And that might even be is this, conservative. Is this seven? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Merely a ground rule, though. Yep. Now, well, I'm going to jump after this half inning because I want to let you you focus and and, yeah, no uh, and close it out. But this has been a blast, and thanks yeah, for having was, me thanks on. Thanks for coming on on your birthday, no less, too. But before you <laughs> before you go, do you want to tell? I'm sure I am. Do you want to tell other people what you got going on in your life? What you've been not, working towards? Yeah, not a whole lot right now. But I'm right. I've been lucky to uh, to broadcast. Um, I got hired in November by ESPN, primarily calling games for their ACC network, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, was was very lucky to be a part of Red Sox spring training and to have the chance to call some some games if we get to a regular season with them this right. year. So yeah, Chad, so yeah, that's where you'll three, be able three to three great hear years them. with the Paw Sox, and and you know I, I miss it, and I, I know I'll get back there and check things out, and can't wait to see the new ballpark. Um, whenever that is next year, but yeah, it, uh, it's, it's the Paw Sox. I don't need to tell anyone here on it, but just a, a real special place. And, uh, I'm sure it'll be the same way in Worcester. All right, Mike, we miss you. It's great hearing from you. TQ, I'll, I'll let you close go enjoy it out. your birthday. Close it out, man. Thank you for having me. And thanks to everyone for chiming in on the chat here. It's been fun to to enter this world with you guys it's fun to watch and tq you're a talent man so finish it <laughs> off appreciate it see you later all right see you guys what a class act folks huh just an absolute stud
cow, this has been a pretty wild game that's been going on kind of in the background of me just catching up with my buddy Mike Monaco real quick. You guys enjoying this one? Uh-oh. I've been letting up a lot of balls in the left center gap. We'll take that and say thank you, chat. Awesome game. Appreciate it, Isaac. I've been... Again, don't want to toot my own horn, but I've been, I've been doing some, some interesting moves from a managerial standpoint as I just leave a splitter hanging over the heart. But Barnes has pitched, what, one and a third now? Hot Sox Mafia, you're right. Yep, Barnes, he getting tired. Let's get the bullpen up. Let's warm up Heath. See if he can catch up to oh, 99 still, even though he's tired. Good outing. Let up a run, but a great outing from Matt Barnes. And yeah, Mike, the Barnes wind up. Some of the animations in this game are unbelievable. The attention to detail they have. Oh, we got to get, this reminds me, we got to get Workman going. Who do we got? Ottavino. Ottavino has a lot of left to right movement on his pitches. A lot of stuff that slides all over the place. We're going to warm up Darwin's in too. Josh Taylor's just been warming up for six innings. He's just been throwing a game in the bullpen. That's all right. Get out, ball. Bogey, baby. Let's go. Really wanted to get that one back. After leaving a hanger last inning, really wanted to get that one back. Chad, are you seeing, like, it looks like there's almost a little bit of a lag. Like, it looked like... It looked like he wasn't going to get to that ball. And then it kind of just went into went into his glove like a vacuum. I think it is seven. We'll have to look at the box score after the game, Taylor. But I think that might be seven bombs. I mean, it's playing just like Yankee Stadium, isn't it? Yeah, Isaac, right? Like, that ball looked like it was going up the middle earlier, and it just kind of jumped back towards short. All right, Mike Antonellis, you said it earlier. Let's see if we can do it. Triple shy of the cycle for Chavis here. Let's see. Thank you, everyone who's followed, by the way, too. I know. Alexella, thank you. Graffiti, thank you. Ah, that's not going to find a gap in the outfield. Just a huge hole with the shift on the righty. Jackie. Jackie finding some green. And the outfield defense is just so hard to play in this game. Now Baskins. Carol Baskins. I know. When you're playing, like, real online games, there's a lot of rage quitting if you hit bombs. 
But I mean, for every home run I've hit, he's had what? Like two balls that he's hit right there for extra bases. He's been shopping at the left center gap all day. have Mike Antonellis. I've learned that rage from opponents. I, I'll tell a story to the rest of the chat that you told me. T. Scannell, thanks for the follow. So, Mike Antonellis told me a story he was playing online the other day. He was beating up on somebody pretty good and then they just started hitting every hitter. Just first pitch, fastball, plunked him. First pitch, fastball, we got ice. And he, he talked to me after it was before one of our Tuesday broadcasts and he brought it up he was like is that a thing that happens all the time and it is people will just start hitting you and I don't know what they think they get out of it but they just try to they just hit you over and over and over again until they finally decide to quit nice backdoor cutter there were Brandon Workman, a great story, too. A lot of time in Pawtucket. He was really an integral part of that 2013 World Series on uh, the playoffs. It was pretty much once Breslow kind of lost his groove in the playoffs, it was pretty much Tazawa, seventh inning, Workman, eighth, Koji, ninth. And Workman was lights out. You want to see Mike and, and me play? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> right now we have a pretty we have a pretty full slate. I know we're only streaming a couple days a week. Um, I might even start. Who knows? We might start streaming some Diamond Dynasty games. We might start just hanging out, giving people some more stuff to watch, but. For right, for right now, we're going to stick with this international E-League and try to win the whole thing. There's two down. So to give you guys an idea, right now we're sitting at 3-3, three and three, which is tied for second in this international E-League. The first place team at 6-1. And 6-1, one. And and one, I think, means that whoever... Somebody lost to the computer, is my point. But at 6-1, and one, it's the Syracuse Mets, who we played week one. Had a heartbreaking 2-1 loss against Mets catcher Rene Rivera. He had Jacob deGrom on the mound. But good to get in the win column again. Great catching up with Mike Monaco, just a stand-up guy. Phenomenal broadcaster, if you guys haven't heard him before. Seriously? look him up i was listening or i was watching some old videos listening to some of his old calls from last year getting a little nostalgic and it was a lot of fun red Sox win that's what i'm talking about we're all fired up let's see if we can get let's see if we can get a little something going for you guys here i'll try to make sure it's quiet enough that uh that it's not overpowering me. Three hours and 55 minutes. Tonight's paid attendance at Yankee Stadium, 47,309. The Yankees and Red Sox, thank you for your patience. Yeah, a little dirty water. The unfortunate thing is I can't hear this either because the music and the microphone are the same input. But let's see. Bradley, four for five with two bombs. Oh, Bradley was a double shy of the cycle, too. Moreland, three for five, two bombs. Chavis, four for five. Oh, Vasquez. I totally forgot Vasquez in the bomb, too. Let's see. One, three, four, six, seven, eight. Eight dingers. Just having a home run derby in the Bronx. That's what we love to see as Sox fans.
21 hits, 13 runs. That five spot in the fourth was huge. That really set the tone. And then in the ninth, just to make it out of reach. But that was that was a fun one. That was a really fun game to play. Tanaka only going three innings, too. But Eddie, not the best start. He always pitches well in real life in New York. But I think he was missing some breaking stuff today to kind of keep the hitters off balance. But still got five innings out of him for the win. Seven earned is tough. Only three strikeouts, two walks. Got to get those walks down, too. But Again, if you guys aren't following already, if you could hit the follow button, totally free up above this stream. Uh, and then you'd be able to participate in the chat next time. We're going to be live on Tuesday at 7 o'clock the next week of this international e-league and we are facing off against lehigh valley the lehigh valley iron pigs triple a affiliate of the philadelphia phillies lehigh valley currently sits last in our division they were a game back going into this week uh, but we'll see we'll see how they're doing this week too they won their game against the computer, and it looks like Syracuse won their head-to-head. -head. That just went in. But, guys, again, thank you so much for joining us. Doc, I appreciate it coming into the chat. Um, again, follow us on social. We'll remind you when we're going live. We post about it every morning, afternoon, and right when we go live. Uh, we're going to try to post more clips like today, too. So follow us at Paw Socks. Um, yeah, what, what more can I say, guys? You know, great win. Took down the Evil Empire two one in a best of three series. So I know it was it was tough losing the first series of this E League, but we're trending in the right direction. That's what I'm talking about. So thank you guys so much again. Appreciate it. And we'll see you later. Peace.